I'm all here ready. And now it's time to go to the Today Show. Are you ready to come to the Today Show? Come on, let's go. Hey, I'm Lisa. I am a author, speaker, and mom coach, and mom to seven gorgeous kids with one on the way. And in this video, you're joining me as my husband and I travel to New York City because I'm going to be on the Today Show. In today's video, I'm going to share with you what it has been like to promote my brand new book, The Possibility Mom, How to Be a Great Mom and Pursue Your Dreams at the Same Time. The book promotion has taken me all over the United States and Canada. I have been to LA, Nashville, Indiana, Vancouver, Calgary, Halifax. Halifax, Calgary, can't forget Salt Lake City. But today, where are we going today, Josh? Today, we're going to the Today Show. Gosh, it's happening, it's happening, it's happening, it's happening, it's happening. So we're driving. This one over here makes <laughs> fun of how much I've been napping. May I remind you I am 20 weeks pregnant with our eighth child husband. But we are excited to be doing this road trip styles. And um, you know, being on the Today Show is something that I literally wrote down at the beginning of this entire process. And when we hired a publicity team for the book, that was one of the questions that they asked me, like what would be a massive, you know, get for you media wise, or like a huge sign of success, or like a really big goal. And I, that was the very first thing I said. I was like, well, to be on the Today Show, and I honestly cannot believe that it's happening. Okay, so we are our, I don't know, what are we at, honey? What, how many hours have we been driving? Uh, like eight. Okay, well, we're, we're, we're almost there. It's been a long day of driving, but also very nice because, one nice thing about driving is that my husband and I have been able to chat really leisurely um, and really reflect on what it's like to write a book. So here's the thing. Um, let me know in the comments, first of all. Do you have a dream in your heart to write a book, but you don't even know where to begin? And if you're interested in a video all about how to write a book and all the sort of steps that are required for writing a book, let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to share with you all that in another video. But we've been really reflecting as we've been driving about just like what happens after you write a book. So let's just say you start and you finally finish it. In my case, it took two and a half years. I had two babies while writing The Possibility Mom. And then all of a sudden you have this book and it's out in the world. I used to joke all the time and it's like my eighth child, even though I'm having <laughs> my eighth child. Um, it's it's really like this labor of love and then you're like now what and so the process of sharing the book with the world has been really like a whole other task a hard task as well as an emotional task I had to overcome a lot of feelings of like do I really deserve this let me give you an example I was so afraid to like get this out in the universe that I fully delayed forever the process of hiring a publicist and my husband was like how come you haven't like sent any emails yet or like interviewed anybody and I had to be honest with him and share with him that like I was actually afraid about people not liking the book and you know if I didn't tell anybody about it <laughs> then I wouldn't have to put myself up for that disappointment and so it's been a really interesting experience just like unpacking a few of those emotions um, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful um, for this process I think I've grown up a lot in this process I've had to really deal with I think the best phrase is detachment from success and not really like caring whether or not the book is successful. Now, let me just give a caveat there. Like, let's just be very clear. Let me qualify what I just said. Of course I care about the success of the book. I really care about the success of the book. But what I think I've had to really grow up in is this whole notion of what is my self-worth based in? And I've had to really grow in the area of not allowing the success of these external things like the book, how well it does on a bestseller list, what kind of media coverage I get, inform my self-worth because I think that's where it gets really dangerous when we start to say like, oh my gosh, as soon as I'm on the Today Show, I will have made it because then, and this is how I used to live for a really long time. I used to live like, as soon as I'm in this magazine, I will have made it. But 
the challenge is when you put your self-worth or you tie your self-worth up in these external accomplishments, there's always more to, to get. That's why I'm really grateful for this experience, although it was very challenging to overcome, but I'm really grateful for this experience because it's allowed me to really grow in the area of where, where do I put my self-worth? Okay, the other very important thing that I have learned that I think is helpful for any aspiring authors out there um, is that a, writing a book is not a get-rich-quick type of endeavor. Like, people keep asking me, like, how are things going? How are book sales? And I'm like, I have no idea. Like, it's not, it's not the kind of thing where you see money immediately. Like, obviously, if I speak at an event and I sell books at the back of the room, I see that money somewhat immediately. But in the traditional way, when you work with a publisher, you don't see a paycheck for a really long time, you know? And a good portion, if I maybe just be very, very honest with you, a good portion of that paycheck is going to the retailer that has purchased the book and then of course a portion is going to the publisher and then of course a portion goes to the author but that portion is way in the future like I can't even remember like I think it's in a year I will actually see money from traditional book sales so I think that's really important to remember that a book can be like not a get rich quick type of mechanism but it's like an entry point for people into um, your world so I think that's a really helpful tip for any aspiring authors, think of your book as mainly a piece of a larger puzzle. Okay, I'm all here ready, and now it's time to go to the Today Show. Are you ready to come to the Today Show? Come on, let's go. <laughs> Today show. Where is the? Didn't they, didn't they send it to I'm us? I'm sure they did, but direction. Ten minute walk. Like that's Right, right. Okay, so we need to upgrade because I'm about to have our eighth baby, and that is what I want. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the wealthy for transit in yeah. black, and it's so pretty looking in black. It's like an extended limo. It's like I'm a limo driver. <laughs> Let's not fall and break an ankle before live TV. <laughs> this is my nightmare, P.S., that live TV, like, something will happen that will impede me from getting there. <laughs> One time, very recently, we were in, I was in Halifax. I think it was Halifax. It was either Halifax or Calgary. And that can be a little directionally challenged, let's just be honest. Punched in the address, to the network it took me to a network but not the right network but I aimlessly just followed my GPS this is why I insist I always arrive like 45 minutes early for live TV I showed up brought in all my props got myself all psyched up go to the front desk and they're like oh I'm sorry like nobody's expecting you today and I was like oh my gosh this is the wrong network and I Thankfully had just enough time to drive myself across town to the other Station and made it on time for my call time. Anyways live TV. I love it But you also have to like you can't be late. <laughs> there's no there's no do-over on Being on time for live TV. There it is. Okay. This is 49th. There. Oh, get out of here. Is that it? Yeah. Wow See what we know you see? Go and celebrate the ball away at the end. There's a the person with the podium who's going to help you. No problem.
sit right here, just don't come any further, okay? Lisa Canning is pregnant with her eighth child. Yeah, we're talking eight. And she still managed to write a book called The Possibility Mom. Yeah, they've got some great strategies to help you manage time and expectations. Hi, ladies. Hi. Oh, hi. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah. And then you're lost. And this is a peak. Yeah. Right. We've peaked already. Darn. <laughs> So we just wrapped the Today Show. I am just, I can't, I don't know. I, I am a ball of emotions, let's just say. But probably the biggest one is grateful. I'm so grateful for this opportunity. Um, I'm also grateful that it went okay. Like, <laughs> live TV, you know what I mean? Like, you don't want to like fall over on live TV. So thankfully nobody fell over. There were no wardrobe malfunctions or anything like that. And now we are at this pizza place that we are told is the best Neapolitan pizza in Manhattan, apparently. According to my publicist husband who does food importing, and he imports something, I guess, for this restaurant. So we're gonna eat, we're gonna celebrate. My husband will drink all the wine on my behalf, um, and I will eat all the pizza that a pregnant woman can. Well, my goodness, thanks for coming along with me on this journey of promoting my book in New York City. We're on our way back home to Toronto and all of our babies. A couple of other thoughts that I think are really important when you are an aspiring author or if you are an author um, or if you have anything really that you've created that you're really excited about. Um, number one, even if you have an amazing publicist, you personally have to keep talking about the book because nobody can talk about the book the way that you can. Um, and I think, and forgive me that I can't remember the reference, but apparently people need to see something like at least three times before they even like think about buying it. So to have things in your Instagram stories, to have Instagram posts up, to use social media well, to be a good storyteller, those kinds of things, I think are very valuable. Um, what I've learned is that people often are coming through me through other people. And it's because those other people have been talking about the book or about things they've heard me say or what have you. Um, and so I think that's a really important piece of um, this puzzle of sharing your message. Number two, I think that is so important is that you have to remember why you're doing this. I think of course it can feel like, oh, but like I don't want people to be irritated with me if I'm like salesy and reminding them of things all the time. I understand that. However, why did you write this book in the first place? Who is it you want to help? For example, I want to change a generation of motherhood. I hope that, you know, when I look back on my life, I hope my legacy is that I have helped make motherhood less overwhelming, more free, more fun. I hope that I have helped a bunch of moms all over the world pursue their dreams while being great moms at the same time. That is what motivates me to keep talking about the book because for me personally, I really feel like this book will help people if they read it. And so I think that's really important to have a like like a soapbox. Like why are you getting up on a soapbox in the beginning? Who is it that you want to help? I think that's really important to remember. Okay, and number three. I think it's important that you be confident in asking people to do things. So for example, when I was on the Today Show, I did an Instagram story where I shared to my audience and said, um, hey, like if you're by a TV, can you do me a favor and like snap a shot of where you are um, and tag me in it, right? Um, that might seem like a weird favor to ask, but I, I don't think people think to do these things on their own. Like, like it's, it's just not like an intuitive thing. Like, oh yeah, I'm going to snap a picture and share it with Lisa. But when you ask them to do it, people are mobilized and that also helps to spread the message, right? And so I think asking your audience even to do things like, hey, if you haven't like placed an Amazon review yet, can you go over and do it? And not to be afraid to ask that of the people who are following you. And again, why, why is this an important thing? So that more people see your message. I think that's the key, like, and I think this comes with confidence and this comes with experience, but you've got to believe in what you wrote. That's just it. There's no other way to say it. You've got to believe that what you created is gonna help people. And if you don't believe that it's gonna help people, then maybe you need some more empirical evidence. 
or maybe you need to rework it until you feel confident that it actually helps people. But like write it, get it out there, you know, test it on a small group if you want and then revise it and then really get it out there. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I don't think we should be paralyzed by perfection. Absolutely not. You guys hear me talk about this all the time, but like you've got to believe that what you have matters and what you have is going to help change the world. I really think that's the most important thing to remember in the conversation of promoting a book. You have to believe in your message. If you don't believe in your message, then perhaps you either need to um, draw on the belief of other people. So you need like empirical evidence uh, from people that your book or your product has helped. Um, Or perhaps you do need to shift something and change something to ensure that it is helping people to change. Okay, and then tip number four that I found has been, in my experience, really fun and really helpful has been to connect with people in real life as much as possible. So when I have been doing media in these different cities, I have, um, in most of the cities I've visited, hosted a meetup of some kind. So in some cases, like I did in Salt Lake City, it was a very formal meetup where um, key influencers were invited, I treated them to a really nice lunch, I gave a formal presentation. And then in other cities, like Halifax, for example, um, and Vancouver, I had more casual meetups where um, I simply just said, hey, like no RSV required, just come and meet me at this restaurant, and I would love to see you there. So. Um, Having these like physical touch points with people I think are um, very um, unique and there is just something like the internet is amazing. You and I are connecting right now because of the internet, but there is something so wonderful about in-person events. I also really, like this is a personal value of mine, I love fostering connections and you've probably heard me talk about how much I care about moms helping each other out and moms forming community. And so sometimes these, uh, you know, even if they're just totally casual meetups can be very memorable and very helpful in facilitating new friendships, new conversations, and new connections. If you're interested on more videos on motherhood and my book, The Possibility Mom, just click right here in the cards where I've made a playlist just for you, and I'll see you on the other side.